Hey guys, the build show is going a little bit rogue today. I'm in a gorgeous section of Austin. Uh, I'm gonna be visiting a friend of mine, Brian Long, who's building a house in this established subdivision down here. Look at this incredible neighborhood. We are right outside of Austin, Texas. And the houses uh, that you're seeing that we're passing, most of them built around the 80s or 90s, uh, I think is when this subdivision was first developed. Um, so we've got uh, an incredible waterfront location here where my friend Brian Long is building a custom home like no other. But the focus of today's video is going to be about some of the board form concrete that Brian's doing. My friend Chris Walcher who owns Booth Concrete, you've seen him on my videos but it's been a while since we've done some board form with him. He does incredible work. We just had a bunch of rain but apparently he's got some, uh, some board form walls up and he's pouring another one tomorrow. So let me throw my rain boots on, and I'm guessing we're gonna be heading to that job site uh, right over there. All right, so killer uh, waterfront location here. Check this out. I can tell you that Brian, uh, if you joined me on his job site when we did the foundation waterproofing stuff with him last year, he doesn't mess around. Wise builder about 10 years older than I am, just does an incredible job. Uh, and Booth Concrete also does a lot of concrete work for me, uh, is working over here. Oh yeah, check this out. Look, here it is right there. Look at that curve. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. All right, y'all, so you guys know Brian. You've met him before. We're on his uh, waterfront job site here. And they've already poured a curved wall. Oh man, look at that. Look at that beautiful grain, Brian. Yeah, sandblasting makes a huge difference. So you s you actually sandblasted the... Uh, all the forms. All the forms. So what's the material? It's uh, SPF? Doug fir. Doug fir, okay. Yeah. So you're starting with Doug Oh, actually, let's look at the inside of the form real quick while we're here, Brian. Yeah. So here's a curved wall right here. Look at all those kickers they've got. Um, because this tall wall needs some serious support. And so they're out at least 12, 15 feet back so they can bring them out. And they've also got adjusters here so they can adjust that and get that perfectly plumb. And then you were mentioning this is, this is Doug Fur, right? Yes. Wow, check that out. Look how deep that grain is on that Doug Fur. Try to keep it to 3 sixteenths, not get any further wow. than that. It's hard with sandblasting, obviously. But... Some go a little deeper, some don't. That's really, really cool. And then here's those fiberglass form ties that you've seen the guys at Booth used before. They they basically disappear once they pour the wall, don't they, yeah, Brian? Absolutely. That's pretty awesome. And then we have a foam core in this wall to give us a semblance of a thermal break, if you will. Okay, so this wall right here is going to be an outside wall on the building. Right. Then this must be a guest house or something on the property? Yes, it's exactly what the casino is. Okay. So you've got an R10 in there that's in between. So in effect, you're gonna have an inside wall, an outside wall, and a big uh, sheet of insulation in between those two. Right, trying to help with the thermal massing in between. That's pretty awesome. And how tall is this wall gonna end up being? Uh, this one will be a little over nine feet. Okay, so not as tall as that other one it doesn't look like. No, they're all about the same, believe it or not. Let's go take a look at that one. Oh, that one's nine foot as well? Yeah. It looks Just, taller to me. Well, that's because there's three foot of slab showing down below. Man, look at all those kickers. Holy cow, man. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of weight. They have to pour this pretty quick. There's no room for stop and goes. Yeah, that's for sure. So here's the finished product right there. Well, the other side's even better. We had a little bit of peeling on this one because of the overly shot green. Wow. But that's not going to be seen anywhere on the project, which makes that acceptable. Oh, that's incredible, Brian. And this here we right are, here. right on the water here. This is phenomenal. Oh my gosh. Look at that wall, Brian. Yeah, Dang. it's pretty amazing. That is beautiful. Chris did a phenomenal job of pulling all the together. Yeah, he really did. So is this the same as the other one? You've got a curve in there and you've got insulation in between the two? 
Uh, this one didn't need to be insulated because we have an air gap between the structure and the and the and the living quarter. Okay. On the other two, we actually have windows that are actually in the actual pour of the concrete. So there's a block out that's done where we're doing a coil blocking. Oh, wow. We're using uh, the counter flashes, which we're going to saw cut in, and then we'll have everything line up with all the wall lines. So I had my framer come out, line up all our walls, get everything exactly where it's going to be, so we knew exactly where we had to be for the windows. That's beautiful, Brian. Who's the architect over here? This is Jim LaRue. Okay, the Jim LaRue project. And man, look at that grain pattern. I mean, it is just... Yeah, just it makes you want to touch it. Yeah, it's look very, very that. tactile. Wow. Clients absolutely love it. They I've just... never seen anything like that before. That is just beautiful. Hopefully it's going to come through in the video because it's it's hard to, to show or to talk about the 3D pattern. It's beautiful. Yeah. And can you see the curve too? Look at that curve just sliding by. It's just, it's slight enough, but pretty enough that it's, whew. So how did, how do they bend these boards, Brian? Did they back curve these? We're back curving all of them in a regular assigned pattern with a radial arm saw to make sure the depth is the same. Okay. So our bend stays exactly the same. Just like you would if you were building, you know, custom radius desks or right. anything. Right. All the reliefing has to be exactly the same. Do those other boards have that radius cut? Over yes, there? yes, they I do. didn't see that. Let's go back and look at that. That's pretty cool. I just noticed this too. Look, Brian, you got a cantilever on this slab, dude, don't oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> and a little, little subtle cantilever there. What is that cantilever off? Maybe foot and a half or so? Yeah, and then what happens is this gets a nice thick stone coping all the way around that wraps and goes down. And then we used a little thinner material here to save the client a little bit of money on the actual materials. Oh man, that's really cool. That is beautiful. And then, of course, this is where our brawn ball windows will be going, is in all these tracks. Ooh, so, tell me about that. Oh, yeah, Italian thermally broken windows. Ooh. The, they can create the largest glass in North, or actually in, a, in the world. With is that a right? 10 foot by 36 foot, one piece of glass oh with a 3 8 sight line. There's no company in the world creating something like that right now. And so, you're, you're, uh, so this is your lip to make sure water's not coming in the house, That's then? That's correct. And then all our floors are an inch and a half above this. Okay. And then you must have some steel framing going here. You got some plates in there. Yeah, some this is all plates. the Braun Ball, all their stiffeners. Braun Ball supplies everything. Wow. That company is truly phenomenal. I'm not dealer. familiar with those guys. Italian windows. Our uh, segmented curved window for that wall over there will be eight foot by 12 foot sections. Oh wow. Watch your step, Brian. Yep. You want to go back this way? It's pretty muddy. Okay. I wore my boots. My mud boots today. All right, so show me those curves, Brian. That's how they're. Yeah, in both being... directions. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. Okay, I was I was missing that before. How accurate the patterning is. So to keep the bend. So this is very little leg. You don't need a lot. Right, right. But occasionally you'll get a board that's tough and doesn't want to bend, and you'll have to add some more. Okay, so this board right here, maybe you've got. A curve every what inch and a half maybe yeah. on that one. That one was pretty stubborn. Whereas this guy above here, you've got a curve maybe every nine, ten inches right. on that. And it's all about the graining and the actual wood, did you know? Yeah, and you know what I forgot to mention too. Look, here's these fiberglass uh, wall ties. They don't have the back side of these ties on yet to hold the arms together. But you notice them here. We didn't notice them on that other wall, but they were there, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. They just totally disappeared, don't they? And Chris, Chris brought those to my attention. I wasn't aware of that product, but yeah, you can't even see them. Yeah, you look at that wall over there, and, and those fiberglass wall ties are there, but they totally have disappeared. That's pretty amazing. And are you sandblasting uh, these boards here on site, Brian? No, we actually sent them off site because of the environmental issue with sandblasting okay. yeah, yeah. in Austin. That would be a yeah, huge point. violation. So, um, and sandblasting is messy, so we wouldn't want it in a neighborhood like this. Yeah. The sad thing is we are going to have to do it, but we're actually going to have to rent a tent to oh, do right? some of it here on site. Okay. So we can keep completely uncapsulated. So these dug fur boards, these were pre-sandblasted. And then you curved them on site. And yes. The guys from Booth Concrete have assembled them all. Also, I also like, I think I mentioned this earlier, how they've got adjustable jacks on there. Yes. So when they put these kickers on there, they can they can put a little fine-tuned adjustment. And they're constantly checking it as they pour. Even the slightest bit, they crank it back over, they use those jacks to move it back. Yeah. And uh, any anything special that, that you know of that you guys are doing for prevention of honeycombing on a job like this? 
Well, we're adding some stabilizers, some uh, plasticizers, and then he's using a five sack mix, which really makes a big difference. Gives you a lot more of the top coat so that it gets into the grain. Yeah, that and they're vibrating it like constantly. They have three or four vibrators on this job as they go. Yeah. Normally you wouldn't want to have that much, but on this, with being board form, you have to have it. And is he doing uh, us anything special in terms of placing the concrete with his uh, with his pump? Is he just doing it in standard lifts, making sure that everything's all poured at one time? No, he's doing a constant pour with a uh, dropping a stinger down in and pouring it from the bottom up, and he just keeps moving it over. And from the bottom up, okay. That and way by we, stinger, you mean it's basically a steel pipe, right? Steel pipe It's almost like a cast through. iron, uh, you know, drainways vent pipe, right? It's exactly what it is, yeah, and they just attach it to the bump, run it all the way down, and then just pull it from top to bottom, so then or he's, bottom to top. So sorry. then he's filling the forms from the bottom, and bringing those lifts all the way up. The other thing, something else that Chris does that a lot of guys miss and causes a lot of problems on your board form, he's putting silicone in between the boards ah. to make sure we get all the water staying in there. Got because it. if that water gets out, then you get dry spots mm -hmm. and that can cause sand and the sand will bleed right through. Got it. And you can actually see that silicone right there, right? Yes, that He's absolutely. using some white there so you can see that squeeze out. And, and, uh, if you didn't do that, Brian, you if you didn't have that silicon keeping that in, you'd be worried that you'd get too dry of a mix, right? Too dry, all your water will come out, and it literally leaves a sand, sand residue in the back. And when that happens, uh, interesting. You, you know, first off, you won't get the finish that looks like that. It's right. gonna look, it's gonna look horrible. Yep. Chris's attention to detail is second to none, but he could teach a lot of guys this, whether they follow it or not, is another thing. <laughs> so. Yeah, we've, we've poured quite a few projects with Chris, and he's an amazing concrete guy, that's for sure. I mean, even attention to detail, just blue tape on the concrete that's already there, I mean. Yeah, look at that. So he's blue taping that, and then he's silicon that to you. Yeah. So that blue tape is gonna stick right there. And then when he puts his inside form board, you can see it on that one right over there, down. Then the concrete's gonna hit that. He can pull that blue tape, and then, and then if this inside slab here is a finished slab, he's not gonna have a bunch of nasty stuff on there. Luckily for us, none of this stuff shows. None of the concrete shows except the board form out here, but everything else is getting covered. Man, that's cool stuff, Brian. Absolutely. And uh, and what's supporting all this? This is steel piles over here, right? Yeah, seven inch steel piles, 60 feet to failure. We're pulling really high tests on all of our piles. They're well exceeding the engineer's request. We could put a five story building on here easy. But we also have two foot by two foot uh, grid work of support beams connecting and all the steel interconnects from pile to pile. Mm -hmm. So this was another thing that my brother came up with. So the, as all our rebar comes up and comes out of the piles, it's connected from that pile to the next pile to the next pile, all tied as one giant grid work. That's right. So even if one of the piles fails, the interconnection of all the steel will take take up for whatever's gone. So so uh, for the people watching this who don't know where we are, we're, we're down here on uh, a man-made lake basically this happened right after world war ii uh, in the 1950s this was a army corps project to help flooding uh, with central texas and where we are here this believe it or not is mainly fill and you can see the rock right there on the uh, um, yeah on the base of mount Bennell where we are here but these steel piles these are basically what would get used in the oil industry right that's correct uh three eighths wall something like that seven inch diameter that's right three eighths wall seven inch diameter one of my favorite things is to show people how deep they are by uh dropping a rock down there let's see if we got one that's open and you can hear how deep these piles are let's see if i can get it in here without falling down on this myself so check this out guys You hear that? We're probably, what'd you say we are, Brian? 60 feet down? 64 feet, yeah. 64 feet down, dang. And then do you have some slab laid out somewhere that we can show how that grid work goes in? Um, Not really at this point, think right? I do right now, and plus it's so muddy, it's all, most of it's covered in water. Yeah, well here's, here's one we can show real quick. So here's the, here's the corner board uh, on a slab. <laughs> And then there's a pile right there that's gotten filled with concrete, and then he's got the his bars rebar. that go from that pile to that pile. So that's what we did is we connected yep. these all with the grid work. Of and then here's his other pile over here, and then he's got his stego on there too for his vapor barrier. I don't think he's he's quite ready for the stego yet, but close. And then you'll see that uh, that as this one connects 
with this other one underneath here, the whole house is basically going to sit on stilts as if it was, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, if we lost everything, this house would still be here. It would be floating above nothing, basically, right? Yeah. And it's, I've I've heard Brent, the pile contractor, whose crane is that right there, say that each one of these piles can hold like, what, 200 some thousand pounds? Is easy, that right? Easy, yeah. God, and we're, amazing. we have 328 right now. We haven't even started on the landscape walls, the driveway, the motor court, any Dang. of that. So it's going to be quite a few more. I'd imagine we'll probably be over 500 when we're all wow. said and done. 328 piles on this little project. Holy cow. Brian. Thank you for giving me the quick tour, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Very kind Always of you, my good friend. Seeing Lefty you. shake. Absolutely. Hey, guys, I'll put a link to uh, Brian's website in the description. And we went out to his other job site about a year or so ago and shot some uh, of Brian's basement waterproofing uh, details, including a French drain system that you've never seen before. So if you're new to my videos and you haven't seen that, go to the description, check out Brian's other videos. This is a builder that uh, I've learned a bunch from. He is a smart and wise, slightly older man than me. Uh, and I love coming to Brian's job sites. Amazing curved wall. I also put a link to uh, the concrete guy and the uh, architect on there too, if you guys want to see some more of their work. But Brian, killer job, man. Great, man. Thanks for all your help. Bye, buddy. Take Have care, bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you later.